Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and um, I don't know man, like every day I'm better, but like I'm never back to 100%. I'm kind of like those uh, rechargeable batteries where after a while they don't fully recharge anymore. I don't know man. Um, but so I'm saying that as a preamble to, I might just be looking in the wrong place and I'm just a little lightheaded, but I was going to do, well, okay. Rewind. So uh, a couple days ago, Stephanie Phillips was announced for her one millionth book, and it was just ridiculous. But it was kind of fun because it gave me an idea for my own book. Very, very excited about that. Um, but I was like, oh, it's time for a, a privilege quotient um, video. I do these every six months to see who is the most privileged uh, writer in comics, and it tends to be Stephanie Phillips. But I was going to go update it <coughs> and I used to use this website and I would swear I would go here and it would have a number of how many books total for their career and I can't find that anymore. It's not an overview. <laughs> Upcoming <laughs> comics. Uh, uh, three in one week. <laughs> Jesus. Um, Three different books in one week. Um, but I swore it was on this tab, the comics tab, and it seems to be gone. So if uh, anyone has any advice for that. So um, you've probably noticed that recently I've, uh, I've been very blunt, specifically in the community posts. And uh, when you combine the, the anger at the Ed Piscor murder and me being sick for like a month now, I'm very short with people. So when I see uh, Heather Antos say in reaction to an article uh, titled, Tom King's Archie one-shot will finally solve the dilemma of Betty or Veronica. And Heather Antos says, I really hope this quote decision unquote ends with Betty and Veronica choosing each other. And instead of some something witty or a, a, a 20 minute video explaining how 2018 this is, I just said, shut up, you dumb bitch. Now, this is what they call an unforced error because I can do infinity minus one thoughtful, lengthy uh, uh, criticisms of Heather Antos and she'll ignore all those. And uh, instead, uh, only response to this one. So she says, uh, LOL, he sure showed me. Okay, so this is how it works. We have to follow the uh, Marquise de Queensbury rules. We have to be above approach all the time. And they get to kill people. But this is one of their things. It's like, oh, he got mad. Oh, he yelled. Oh, he cursed. Oh, he said he said something rude. Gotcha. You kill people. Your peers kill people and you nominate them for awards. Yeah, I got snippy. So um, I can't see entire threads, but um, one person was saying um, in uh, this thread, <coughs> <clears throat> Guys like him give me hope. People like you will get out of comics one day. Uh, sorry to burst your bubble there, Aaron, but if you want to care about mainstream comics, like you will never, ever, ever be free of Heather Antos and Heather Antos types. So her response to this was, quote, people like me, unquote, have been in comics since the very beginning, sweetie. And um, I was like, oh, God, this is not a compliment, but there has never been anyone like Heather Antos in the comic book industry before she herself was hired. The industry just didn't work that way. There were women, yes, from the beginning of the comic book industry, but there weren't women who were insufferable. There weren't 
women who constantly caused problems. There weren't women who hated the customers and were very proud and vocal and energetic about that. There weren't women who couldn't deliver in sales or quality. There weren't women like Heather ever before Heather, but now she's kind of the standard. Um, women in comics right now, well, there's two groups. There's the Heather, T. Franklin, Vita Ayala, Alex DeCampi group. And they get all the attention and everyone's scared of them. Uh, and then there's like the normal women who are so quiet because they're like, oh my God, I don't want to be associated with these bitches. I'm just going to sit over here, write Poison Ivy for two years, not talk to anyone, get some pretty good reviews. Like th that's like G, G. Willow Wilson, Joel Jones, Blake Northcott, like any woman who is normal is so quiet because that's not what they're looking for. Nobody's looking for an Ann Nascenti type anymore. So Heather Antos uh, uh, goes on. Um, so uh, this other guy says, talentless hacks that were brought in as work wives and only kept around because they bullied everyone else around them while not being able to have meaningful sales Nah, you're the first of your kind. That is, damn, that is 100% accurate. Uh, oh, so he goes on and he says, you're an embarrassment to people like Ann Nascenti and Joe Duffy. So um, Heather says, uh, my work has consistently broken records, been translated into other multiple forms of other media and one prestigious accolades. But yes, believe the whines of emotionally underdeveloped YouTubers who cry about, quote, girl got job. Uh, I deserve without doing any of the work. Well, I'm not willing to be Jordan White's work wife. So in that regard, you did, quote, do the work, unquote. But um, it's very interesting that this guy mentions women who everyone liked nobody had a problem with i got into collecting comics on a regular basis and you had anna senti and louise simonson writing comics just with everyone else not really considered strange or unusual no special treatment everybody loved them everybody loved joe duffy hell the first the first woman in comics that I remember people being kind of like, eh, was Devin Grayson. And I know there was some weird, like, Nightwing storyline that kind of got her canceled, but I'm not aware of that storyline. No, it was the way she got into comics. Like, she was just suddenly there. And people liked her stuff okay. But, like, her, uh, her entrance into the industry was like, she literally said this. She's like, I was watching Batman the Animated Series. And she didn't really have any history with superheroes. She's like, I really liked it. So I called DC and I said I was interested in writing and she got an interview and instantly got hired. Um, men don't get to enter the industry like that. Men don't get to enter the industry the way Heather Antos did. Um, these are non-traditional paths into the industry, let's say. Even... <coughs> with people like Anna Senti, as I've mentioned a million times, she got into the industry because she just needed a job. Uh, Village Voice, this was like a hipster paper in New York City, ad for a secretary. She said it was basically kind of vague. She got there, it was comics. She didn't really know comics, but she knew how to type. She didn't like being a secretary, though. Her mom said, never be good at something you don't like doing. So she started like kind of hinting around. It's like, hey, I've got this education. I think, you know, maybe editor. So they put her in as assistant editor and she like slowly builds up her career while making no mistakes, never attacking the fans, never having this massive ego because you're Jordan White's work ex-wife and you're in this weird, unfireable position because I said something rude to you seven years ago after you called me a Nazi. 
explain <laughs> it's always funny when people get into comics like recently and like they don't really know the lore it's like well clearly this guy is having a stroke am i lying chat <laughs> in the comments am i lying uh but anyway um the thing is especially so when i got back into comics basically when i started the channel I mean, I like, I like seriously collected comics from, I don't know, like 1988 to, I mean, obviously my time in the military, it was more difficult. Although when I was in San Diego in the Marines, there was a comic book shop, just a couple. So I would say like, I'm in the comic book shop like every single week, except for deployments and training um, from 1988 to, I don't know, maybe like 2010. Then I started going less just because I was really broke. Like I couldn't afford anything. And then I kind of started listening to YouTube videos 2017. Then I started my own channel. And then I really kind of was catching up on comics. And one of the first things I noticed was that the women were awful. They were monstrous. They were just horribly toxic bullies. Now, the only real precedent to this was Gail Simone. So right at the time I'm kind of getting out of comics for a few years, that's when Gail, who, despite what she wants to say, was welcomed into the industry just fine. She started off, she had a column, people tended to like it, um, and then she started writing, <coughs> and she basically just wrote like Peter David, and people liked Peter David, so everyone was kind of fine with her. But then when social media especially forums and message boards, she she just turned into a fucking monster. Now, usually it was like this weird like proxy thing. Like she would kind of, she would direct her cat lady army of fans to like attack her enemies, but I would say like, oh, I, I was at a convention. Oh, what's happening? Even with the uh, last December, uh, when she joined in on a digital lynch mob to attack a retailer for a very bland uh, criticism and then attack Mark Millar for defending him and then apparently somebody said like hey um that that retailer did nothing wrong and neither did Mark and it's not 2018 anymore so then she's like oh uh I was on an airplane and then like spent like the next month just like retweeting like everything Mark says like great um but there was a precedent with Gail Simone but she was a one-off at that time, like 2010 time frame, that was kind of like, uh, what was it? Like Marjorie Lua, G. Willa Wilson. They were just kind of normal. They like matched like the era of like Louise Simonson. Like there was, there was never any like, we hate women. Like that, that never existed um, until it was basically created by uh, Heather Anto. So her claim that there were people like her since the very beginning no fuck no there weren't people like you before you got hired in what like 2015 there was like one-offs like there was gail simone but she was i don't know like she was just kind of like how do i say it like out of phase you know with the rest of the industry like she got writing like in a weird way like she talked about like fridging and then they're like oh we got to prove we don't hate women by hiring this woman woman but then like she she wrote just fine for several years she was just she would like beef with other pros but she wasn't like just attacking the fans and just degrading uh people her 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 bit for like the last geez almost a decade is that she will purposefully get something wrong and then say it and then when people correct her which is usually men because that's who reads comics for the most part, despite what a Facebook poll from 2014 says. Um, she would just just relentlessly, oh, this is mansplaining, this is this, this is this, you hate, you hate women. It's like, what? If you say Colossus is a robot and somebody corrects you, that's either they don't know the bit or they're probably autistic and they just like can't like they just gotta correct you like no he's not a robot but she's like 60 and she's just fucking with people heather antos i was talking about this like one of the things that is so difficult 
to um, deal with people like Heather, people like Gail Simone, people like Alex DeCampi. Why is it always women? Uh, is that we are dealing with something that never existed before. In all other periods of human history, you had to provide something, some sort of value. You couldn't just fuck with people every single day. Like if you were a king and you were too despotic, you know, uh, uh, the villagers, uh, the peasants, or usually it was actually the, the, the lords, you know, the barons. They would band together and overthrow you. Um, and, the, and the expectations for like a king was very high. Not only did you have to like maintain your lands or grow them, but even like crops, like you had to bring abundance. Like if there was like a couple of years of like bad crops, everyone's looking at the king like it's his fault. Um, and but you, like so and maybe, you know, he would kill off his political enemies, but you were you were uh, expected to be a net positive no matter what you were, even if you had power. You couldn't just be like a guy in a village. Like you don't, you're not even like, you don't even like work at the mill. You're not even like a baker. You're just some guy. Nobody knows what you do. And you just fuck with people. You just start rumors. You get people fired from their jobs. You break up marriages. You break up friendships. And you, you just like tootle along and you just fuck with people every single day while providing no value. That didn't happen. People like that. Like, you would be, like, talking to your friends, like, oh, there's this guy in town, and he just fucks with people. Like, oh, is he really strong? No. Oh, is he really rich? No. Oh, is he is, is he in the government? Is, is he royalty? No. He's just, like, a guy, and he just fucks with people all day long and makes everyone miserable every day. They're like, oh, we got a guy like that in our village. He's named Dead Bob. He's, uh, he's dead on the side of the road, and nobody knows what happened. So yeah, we, we used to know a guy like that. Like, like, there's never been a point in human history where people can just fuck with other people all day long, every day. No money is made, and uh, uh, nothing is provided. And it's just like, what the f So nobody knows what to, what to do in this situation. Um, so Heather Antos has been in the industry. Her, uh, I, I did a video uh, a week or so ago. Her, her origin is ridiculous. Like she watched Adam West Batman with her family and she had a crush on Chris O'Donnell and she wanted to be an actress, but she just gave up on that. And then she went to C2E2 and Jordan White was there. And she's like, um, you're an editor? Uh, I want to be an editor. And he's like, great. Can you show me one of the comics you've edited? She's like, I've never edited a comic. He's like, oh, it's all a problem. So she goes and edits some like <coughs> complete shit anthology. Comes back a year later and he's like, wow, this is great. You should apply to Marvel. Okay, obviously this was not, again, this is not how men get into the industry. Um, this, is, this is privilege. This is what privilege uh, looks like. The funny thing is I was talking about, I was doing the whole like, where do they come from? Like, there's been digital fandom for like 30 years. And and they're always like, you know, Vita, Vita's 40. Danny Lear, Danny Lore is 40. Uh, Heather Antos is pushing 40. If they were like these fans, people would remember them. Like, oh yeah, I remember when you used to post on a CBR message board. I remember you when you were here. There. No, they just, just appear from nowhere. Alex DeCampi. And then a guy wrote to me. He goes, Tumblr. It's always Tumblr. They always come from Tumblr. So he's like, here's Heather Antos' Tumblr. And guess what? It starts literally when she's like, I want to work in comics. So there's, <laughs> there's nothing before. Like she went to college. She wanted to be an actress. She just decided not to at the last moment after graduating. And all of a sudden she loves comics. Like even I did the video when they're like, what was your first comic? It's like, well, I don't know. But I remember when I read Sandman Volume 2, Issue 23. It's like, okay, so that sounds like something you read in like college or something like that. Um, but people like me, no. Heather, there's never been. This is not a compliment. There's never been anyone like you in comics before the year you were hired. It, because they wouldn't be tolerated. Can you imagine Anna Senti? It was like 1979, 1980. 
She gets there as a secretary, just immediately starts accusing everyone of sexual harassment, blackmails her way into an editor job, then does like in a letters column, just starts calling all the customers Nazis. No, there was no one like you before you, Heather. You I, kind of Gail Simone, but she was like this weird, like old lady asterisk. Oh, I'm sorry. She was 28 when she got into the industry. 28 with a 29 year old son. <laughs> she was clearly pushing 40 when she got in the industry and not, it was a rough pushing 40. So she's like 60 now. Um, there was Gail Simone, but she was kind of like a one off. Like you were the beginning of a trend. Like you're the standard of behavior for women in the industry. And that's why there is so much of a, uh, uh, what did uh, Obama say? Antipathy. Um, it's not that we hate women. It's that we hate you because you're awful. And this was clear, like right when I got back, I was like, this is, this is not Joe Duffy behavior. Oh, by the way, all those women I mentioned, Joe Duffy, Ann Nascenti, Louise Simonson, hell, even Devin Grayson, they're, they're all alive. And you've been an editor for 10 years and you've never hired any of them. You hire Liana Kangas, Danny Lore, T. Franklin. You hire other bitches like you. Oh, oh, oh. There's, there should be an alarm. Oh, he's, he called her a bitch. Heather Antos is a bitch. Yeah, I get set up for an easy dunk when I'm rude and I just say, shut up, you dumb bitch. But if Heather Antos isn't a bitch, then there's no defin definition of the word bitch and it, it shouldn't even exist. Like Heather Antos is the dictionary definition of the word bitch. Who does she hire? She hires Leona Congus. She hires Mags. She hires T. Franklin, Vita, Danny Lore. That's the, the caliber of female writer that she hires. She doesn't hire Anna Senti. She doesn't hire, she, she, she doesn't consult with Jeanette Kahn or Diane Nelson because, as I said recently, uh, for this weird cohort of just toxic women like Heather and Alex and Tess Fowler, comics isn't an industry. It's, it's a rage room. It's one of those, do they have those in smaller cities these days? I know they definitely have them in, in larger cities, but a rage room is just like a, a you know, it's just like a place that could have been an office. They just have plywood walls and they'll just put random things in their old clocks. And they give you some goggles and they give you a bat and you just smash things. Um, and that's what it is. Like, you will never hear Heather Onto say, hey, I just reread whatever. Anna Senti's run on uh, Daredevil and I never noticed this. I just, uh, uh, oh, uh, somehow I never read uh, Saga the Swamp thing. Missed out on it. Loved all of Alan Moore's other stuff. Didn't think I'd be into it. Loved it. Heather doesn't read comics. Heather didn't read comics. In the 2015 era, the MCU was hot. Uh, uh, Big Bang Theory was hot. Being a geek, comics was popular. That's why a Facebook poll has 50% women saying they love comics because they, they like the idea of comics. They like the idea of them liking comics. She doesn't read comics. She didn't read them before. She doesn't read them now. She doesn't like comics. What she likes being, and this is probably why she quit the idea of being an actress at the last minute, she likes being a big fish in a small pond. She likes people being scared of her because this is a assembly line, factory settings, basic bitch white girl. She doesn't get to act like this anywhere else. They're going to say to her face a lot worse than shut up you dumb bitch. In comics, she has she has free reign. Um, it's it's like they have psychic powers, and we're all just trying to trying to not get killed by them. Like Scott Snyder, like emerging from the forest where he had a he went camping with his family. Just just oh, I'm so I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't join in on your third uh, digital lynch mob about. Comics gate. I was I was in the Adirondack Mountains with my family, and I didn't have cell signal. I know it's I know it's it's no I know it's not an excuse. Like, just, what the fuck? She doesn't have psychic powers. She's just a bitch. 
like you can ignore her you can tell her shut up you can you can do as you please the only power she has is of a oh oh that guy said a rude thing show me a history book show me the the, just the chapter about the guy who said something rude sometimes it doesn't exist rude words do not make history because they're not that important murders make history collapses of industry make history um uh being set up for massive success the the height of the mcu and you fumble that ball that shit makes history a guy who occasionally says rude things that doesn't make history because it's not important um so weirdly enough some of the stuff you said is true people like you having been in comics since the very beginning Sweetie, why, why did, that's not true, but in a weird way, <coughs> I mean, consistently broken records, biggest bitch in the tri state area. I mean, that's a lock every, every time they have that contest. Being translated, you edit books by other people that are translated because you edit Star Wars books that look like coloring books. That's that's not anything, um, but you have been in, uh, nominated for awards, Eisner's. Um, but, and this is one of those things, so basically she, she's saying like she's made history and you have, but not in the way that anyone would want to. Um, I know you've, uh, uh, specifically Heather have been in many digital lynch mobs designed to get me to kill myself. I don't know the part of the brain that tells people to kill itself. I don't, I guess the synapses are too far apart for me, but you did really, really, really try for years. Um, and uh, you have made history, but it's the history of changing the industry for the worst, that making toxic behavior the norm, that women who are normal just kind of sit on the periphery hoping to not like be associated with you or get singled out. Joelle Jones, I, she did, I think she got uh, semi-canceled a few years ago. It looks like she traced or kind of looked at and copied like two poses for some crap variant cover. Trust me, they were looking for shit to get her on. They, people like Heather, people like Tess, Alex DeCampi, they will not suffer a normal woman in the industry. A woman who acts normal is marked. Um, even with like G. Willow Wilson, I mean, she, I think she kind of, she said, I don't know. I can't remember what it was, so I don't want to say it exists. I remember something about her, like she was kind of, bumping her gums about something about fans or but it was it was not very much and it, it was years ago and she's just kind of just been quiet and just i don't know some people say her run on poison ivy is good uh, i tried it out it wasn't my thing but um you can tell how toxic a, a an industry it is um in that uh normal women are like just so quiet like oh my god do not group me together with those crazy bitches i'm just gonna be an old be over here writing poison ivy and also for someone who's knows her history so well um well it's a trick question because in the mind of heather antos comic book history started basically when she got hired but um Anna Senti, joe duffy louise simonson hell even devin grayson i don't remember you working with any of them certainly not Repeatedly. I mean, there might be one anthology somewhere where you gave one of them a two-page story, but I don't remember it. And I feel like people would have, like, hey, can you believe that Anna Senti is working with... No, it's, it's, not, it's not a thing. Because you don't know who Anna Senti is, Heather. You don't know who Joe Duffy... You say Joe Duffy to Heather Anto, she's like, that dude sounds like a Republican. You have no fucking idea who Joe Duffy is. Because you're not here because you like comics. You're here in spite of comics. You've literally said you are staying in the industry out of spite. Because outside of comics, like I said, factory, freaking default settings, basic bitch white girl. Nobody's afraid of you. You don't get to act like this. You don't get to, for, Who brags like this ever? What actually talented person with actual achievements can you imagine Frank Miller talking like this? <laughs> He's like, first of all, I've created and saved multiple franchises. I've snorted 
the weight of the Empire State Building in cocaine. Like, he's, <laughs> I think both of those are true. But um, uh, you don't see this kind of behavior. This is, this is how Heather Antos talks. This is how T. Franklin talks. This is how Tess Fowler talks. This is how Alex DeCampi. This is how toxic female bullies who don't just bully men. Ed Piscor has women in his family who care deeply about him and were utterly shattered by his murder. You hurt everyone. You hurt men. You hurt women. And your place in the industry, because they always like to brag about, oh, I've, I've worked with this IP, this company. It's not... You're shrapnel. You know, nobody considers shrapnel like, oh, oh this is like, you're shrapnel within the body comics. Uh, you're not anything positive. Um, so, uh, yeah, unforced error on my part, definitely. <coughs> I don't know. Between being sick and witnessing a murder and the accused murderers being rewarded, I'm a little bit. I'm a little bit testy right now. You, you got me there, Heather. But the difference, one of, one of many, the difference between me and you is I actually care about comics. It's not something I fell into because it was 2015 and the Big Bang Theory and MCU movies made it look fun. Like, I, I like comics. I love comics. I read comics. When I have a bad day in comics... I relax by reading comics. If Jordan White would have liked brunettes instead of blondes, the, the history of the comic book industry would be much different and much better. The other one uh, that really would have made it... Do you remember when uh, Jordan White was like the editor of Star Wars and then... The, the editor of uh, X-Men, he had like a family emergency, so he needed to like an easier workload so that they like switched places. <sighs> Talk about, you know, I, that, that's one of those times where if you got a time machine, you're like, oh, I want to save comics. You go back to that time. Because uh, just giving that shithead. And, and uh, <coughs> Wes covered it. Um, Jordan White did basically a, an exit interview with one of those ass kissing sites and he was just like an idiot like he would, they were talking about major plot points that they never explained there's like a thousand Krakoa X-Men comics that's not an exaggeration there's a thousand of them they're like uh, how come you never explained why Kitty Pride couldn't go through the Krakoan gates he's like well I just assumed everyone knew fucking then why oh my god you couldn't explain it in one thousand one thousand books like the guy was just an idiot he was an imbecile um heather antos is uh shrapnel under the skin or what was the deal with the the uh, tony stark in the movies it was like these barbs that like would work their way toward the heart i guess because of the shape of them so uh, uh what was that uh i forget the name of the guy he installs the electromagnet to like pull them away from the heart i I feel like there's a type of surgery that could remove them. Because like, they weren't machines. It was just like the shape and then it was like adiabatic pressure. Like it just kind of drew them forward. But like, eh. um, that's actually not what adiabatic... <laughs> I'm loopy. That's not what adi adiabatic pressure is different. It's why things can feel cool when you blow air through like a smaller area. But um, anyway, um, uh, yeah, so uh, yeah. Hey, good. Hey, good one. Hey, good one, Heather. You got me. I did get a little angry because I actually like comics and read comics, and I've watched them be utterly destroyed by people like you. And when you combine me being sick for a month with me witnessing a murder that was rewarded, yeah, I'm a little testy, and sometimes I'm not as erudite as I could be. Um, you dumb bitch. Um, but uh. The idea that uh, people like you were in comics since the very beginning, no. Not only were people like you not in comics since the very beginning, but people who acted like you didn't really exist before 10 years ago. And in most parts of the world, 
still to this day, you don't get to act like Alex DeCampi or Tess Fowler. Like you, you can't just fuck with people every day for a decade and just be fine like that doesn't exist it doesn't exist for 95 percent of human history and all cultures and about half of the world that type of behavior doesn't fly you have to provide some sort of value even if your value is just that you're very beautiful or very handsome um, but you have to provide something in society and you can't just constantly cause problems without being backed up by some sort of force and again even back in the day can you imagine you're like a a a king and you're being like beheaded by your barons and lords because you couldn't like improve the weather <laughs> like the weather's been really bad since you became king <laughs> it's like i've only been here three years it happens man it's like i tried my best i tripled our lands you know he's like yeah you know but the weather god back in the day even a king had to like if there was too much bad weather you'd get freaking his head chopped off. Now, if you have certain identities, you know, like a white girl from the Midwest, there's not very many of those. You get, to, you just get to do whatever the fuck you want. You get to fucking kill people and get Eisner nominations. Um, but anyway, um, I think I had like one other point to make. I don't know. It's getting stuffy in here. I have to turn off the fan so the audio is at least okay. But, um, yeah, Heather, there weren't people like you in comics before you were hired. In fact, there weren't people who acted like you uh, before like 10 years ago. The idea that someone would come into an industry that they have no interest in, just fuck with people every single day, terrify people, freaking make the fucking top writer at the time, Scott Snyder, like genuflect at your feet because he doesn't want to be called a Nazi by you. No, that never existed. By the way, the women, because you want to play this goo goo gaga thing, like, it's just like, we don't like dames. <laughs> everyone in the comic book industry and fandom, everyone is, who is aware that Ann Nascenti exists has a crush on her. The idea that comic book fans just hated women is not true. We only hate women like you. You're awful. You're an awful person. You are a mean, vicious bully. You don't read comics. You don't like comics. You don't make good comics. You're here by your own admission out of spite. You dumb bitch. <laughs> anyway. Um, uh, yeah, so if anyone can answer, if, uh, if I'm looking in the wrong place or... This functionality has actually been. I'm, I'm telling you, I like making those, uh, uh, those videos, but I'm not going to go in and individually add up all of these numbers every time. If they have removed the uh, the functionality where it just gave you a grand total, yeah, that's that's the end of the uh, the privilege quotient. Um, but uh, anyway, um, thanks for watching. Bye.